When working with bills of materials in PLM 360, we have the capability to roll up numerical values associated with each line item to create a total of all of those values for the complete bill of materials. Weight roll-up and cost roll-up are two good examples of this, where we can determine the overall weight or overall cost of a complete assembly or sub-assembly from the cumulative weight or cost of each item within it. PLM360 does this automatically for us, eliminating the time and effort it would take us to calculate these totals manually. It also does this in real time, so any changes to the bill of materials are automatically reflected in any roll-up totals, providing us with accurate, up-to-date information to base our decisions on. So let's see how we configure PLM360 to provide us with the roll-up totals we need. We firstly have to make sure the type of information we want to roll up is actually available in the items in our bill of materials. If not, we have to create a new field which can be populated for each item and then rolled up to give our total. So let's say we need a weight roll up for an assembly that we're currently working on. Now weight is not a standard field on items in PLM360, so we need to add a new field to capture this value for each item. We need to go to our Items and Bombs workspace settings, into the section for the Item Details tab, and create our new field, which we'll call Weight. Now, when we create a field which will become rolled up in the Bill of Materials, it must be of a particular type. So it can be a floating, integer, money, date or checkbox type of field, but not any of the others at present. We need our weight field to be floating, so we'll define it as that type. We'll also define the field length, precision and display width, and add a description to tell users that this weight is in grams. We save our new field, add it to our item details section, and now every item in this workspace can be given a weight value. So let's test this out by creating a new item in our Items and Bombs workspace. We'll define its category, give it a name, and we can see our new field, so we can add a weight value of 25 grams in this case. We save our item, and we can see it's now created, and has a weight attributed to it. So let's move forward in time a little. Our new component has been added to an assembly now, so let's take a look at the bill of material of that assembly. Now we can see that we actually have a cost roll-up available to us, giving us the total cost of that assembly based upon the individual costs of each component, as defined in each one's sourcing tab. And we haven't had to set this up, it's a standard feature of PLM360. However, we don't yet see any weight roll-up, so we'll need to configure it. And as with most configuration tasks in PLM360, this is pretty easy to do. We need to go back to the configuration page for our Items and Bombs workspace, and this time to the settings for our Bill of Materials tab. As with the items themselves, we need to create a new field, which we'll call Total Weight in this case. Now this field has to be the exact same type as the field to be rolled up, so the weight field we created in the Item Details tab earlier, which was of a floating type. So we set this to floating. We define the field length, precision and display width as before, but this time we have the option to set this field as a roll-up, which we need to check on. And doing this uncovers two further criteria that we need to set. Firstly, the roll-up source. This will present us with a list of fields from the Item Details tab, which are the same data type as this field, in other words, a list of all floating type fields. In this case, we have just the weight field, which is obviously the one we need to select. The other criteria we need to set is the roll-up function. Now this gives us four different options for how we want our roll-up to behave. The minimum function will just find the smallest value from the weight field in all of the items and present this as our total. Similarly, the maximum function will present us with the maximum value, 
So these are useful in some cases, but not really what we're looking for here. So the other two functions are the ones that really give us our true roll-up capability. Now I'll explain the differences between these in a moment, but for now we'll select the Sum with Adjustment option. We then save our field and add it to our Bill of Materials tab, as usual with a simple drag and drop. Once we've saved our new layout, we can return to the assembly we were looking at earlier and see the effect this change has had. We can see the new column in our bill of materials, outlining our weight roll-up. The weight of each top-level component or sub-assembly is given to us, as well as the overall weight of our product, in this case just over 300 grams. If we expand one of our sub-assemblies, we're also given the weight of each component within it, and we can see that the weights of these individual items are added up to give us the total weight of that particular sub-assembly. Now the other way that we can approach this is shown in our other sub-assembly, which is a circuit board. Now we know the weight of that item as a complete sub-assembly, but not of its individual components. So we've added a weight value of 22 grams to the sub-assembly itself, while there's no weight value associated to its component parts. Let's return to the two roll-up functions I mentioned a while ago. You may remember, for the example I just outlined, we used the sum with adjustment function when we defined the roll-up field. Now what this option does is it totals the values for all items within a sub-assembly, then if any value is applied to the sub-assembly item itself, this gets added to the total. So, in our example, let's say that there are some additional items, such as adhesive and finishing materials, added to our complete inner body subassembly, which are not included in its bill of materials, but which weigh a total of 12 grams. So we'll add that 12 gram figure to the weight of the subassembly item. And, because we set our function as sum with adjustment, this is added to the total weight of the items within that subassembly, bringing its total weight up from 98 grams to 110. And this is also reflected in the total weight roll-up for the complete product. The second of these two functions is the sum with override option. This behaves slightly differently. It too totals all of the items in the subassembly, but if there is a weight value given to the subassembly item itself, this overrides the total of those items. For example, if you know the weight of a complete subassembly, and not all of its component parts have necessarily been given a weight value in PLM360, with this option set, you can just enter the overall weight value at the subassembly level and ignore the weights of its components. So let's say in our example, we know our inner body subassembly weighs a total of 140 grams. And we don't really care what each component weighs, we just know this overall value is correct. If the function has been set to sum with override, we can add 140 to the weight field of our subassembly, and this is reflected correctly in the overall weight roll-up of our product. Finally on this topic, let's take a look at how Bill of Material Rollup works when dealing with checkbox fields. The procedure for this is the same as for the rollup of other field types, but the outcome is slightly different. Let's say we're selling our product in Europe, so every component part within it needs to be CE compliant. We'd like to introduce a checkbox field for every item so that it can be checked on if that item is known to be compliant. It would then be useful to have a roll-up of this, so that the overall product is automatically designated as compliant only if all of its component parts are. So to do this, we need to add a new field to the Item Details tab of our Items and Bombs workspace, just as before, but this time set it as a checkbox field, which, as you can see, we already have done here. Then, again, just as before, on the Bill of Materials tab we need to add our roll-up field. We specify the field as a checkbox, and PLM360 allows us to set it as a roll-up field. We then specify the field to be rolled up from our pick list, as we did with our weight field before, and because this is a checkbox, we now have two different functions to choose from this time. Firstly, there's an option called All Checked, 
whereby the rolled up field is only checked on if all of the related fields in all of its component parts are. The second option is any checked, which checks the rolled up field on if any of the fields in its components are. We only want the rolled up compliance checkbox at the overall product level to be on if all components are compliant, so we'll set the all checked options in this case. We'll save our new field and, as before, drag and drop it into place in our Bill of Materials tab. So now, when we take a look at our assembly and its Bill of Materials, we see our new CE compliance column. The first item in our Bill of Material is CE compliant, so its checkbox has been set to ON. And our second item, one of our sub-assemblies, is also showing as compliant. Now if we look at its component parts, they're all CE compliant too. And this is the reason the sub-assembly is. Its checkbox has been rolled up from its components checkboxes. They're all compliant, so the sub-assembly is automatically set to compliant also. Our other sub-assembly shows a different situation though. None of its component parts have yet to be cleared for CE compliance, so by definition the sub-assembly is automatically set to non-compliant too. The last item on our bill of materials, the battery, is also yet to be confirmed as compliant. Therefore, the overall effect of this is that the CE compliance checkbox at the product level, the overall rolled up field, is set to non-compliant. Because of the function we selected, this will only be set to on if all the checkboxes on each component and subassembly were also checked on. So, there you have a detailed outline of what we can achieve with Bill of Material rollups in PLM360. This capability saves us time and effort in calculating criteria such as weight and cost totals and gives all stakeholders in a particular product a real-time view of its status. In our example, its overall weight and whether it's totally CE compliant. And this capability can also be applied to many other criteria, providing up-to-date, accurate information to allow us to make, it, make better informed decisions about our developing product.